guys, what's up? My name is Shar and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to teach classic English junior in 5-1 talk. Before we go to the actual teaching part, let me remind you guys that I have not been part of 5-1 talk for over four years. So the materials may be a little bit different. But during my time, this is one of the materials that they have used to teach their students. So let's dive in. So what you can see here is the teacher's guide. So this is what teachers usually see at their end. Your students will only be able to see this screen. These are the steps of how you teach. Basically, you just follow the instruction that they give you. So the first one is read title. Second one is read the objectives. Third one is discuss the picture shown on the cover. You can't just jump in and start reading the title once you see your student. What I do is I first greet my student and ask them how was their day. And then I start the lesson right away. Because remember, every class is only 25 minutes, so you better watch that clock. Let's pretend you are my student. I enter the classroom and I say hello. Hi, Bob. Hi, Bob. How are you? And then Bob will say, I'm good. I'm happy. I'm sad. Because remember, this class is classic English junior. That means their English level will not be that good. So don't expect them to give you a long answer. After the students answer me, I go right to the lesson. I will say, well, Bob, let's start the lesson. Today, we're going to learn how to say, how are you? What are you doing? And the I am sentence pattern. Not only that, we're going to learn the sound of WH. Sounds good? Then, after he answers me okay or good, then I go to step three. Ask the student, what can you see in the picture? Hey, Bob, what can you see in this picture? The student will usually say, I can see Timmy. I can see Cindy. I can see a TV, I can see a phone, I can see sofa. Because this is a warm up, I will just stop him. I will say, wow, good job. That is right. I can also see those things. Then we go to the warm up. The warm up is usually a song that they are going to learn until this unit is over. So you better learn the song. If the student is a little bit older and does not really want to sing, you can skip this part because you already had a great warm up in the beginning. For our song for today, we're going to sing The Bear Went Over the Mountain. What I usually do is I sing the song first, then we sing together, and then I ask the student to sing alone. When I sing a song, I usually do a lot of movements with my hands so that there's interaction with the student and the student can also follow your actions so bob let's go sing the song okay okay you better sing with me three two one the bear went over the mountain the bear went over the mountain the bear went over the mountain to see what he could see to see what he could see to see what he could see the other side of the mountain the other side of the mountain the other side of the mountain was all that he could see was all that he could see was all that he could see did you sing with me i hope you sang with me after singing the song you praise your students like wow good job and let's move on to the next page then you are presented with a screen with the basic one, two, three. You should just ask your student to look at the picture and ask them what can they see and then they will tell you what can they see and then you do role plays. You can do Timmy first and then the student will do Cindy and then you reverse roles. If the student's English level is a little bit higher than the text and you think this text is easy for them, you can do the extra. But you don't need to do the extra if your student level is not that high okay that's why it's called an extra another thing i do if the student's english level is higher than what the text is intended for i erase the focus words and then ask them to spell it out for me because remember whatever you're drawing whatever you're writing 
on your screen, the students can see it. Um, hey Bob, can you spell how for me? So he will spell H O W. How about fine? F I N E. And then you move on to the next page. In the last page of the story, there's always this challenge the students. Um, if you have, like it says here, if you have more than 10 minutes left, go back to the reading part. Have the student read aloud all the text from one to four by themselves. So what I like to do is we read it three times. Remember what I told you in the beginning, you reverse roles, right? So that's reading one and reading two. And then at the last part, that's reading number three. That's asking the student to read it by themselves. By doing this, you're going to be doing the reading part for around 15 minutes. So it's a good strategy to help you use up the time. Plus it's good for them to practice reading and speaking as well. So it's a win-win situation. So after reading, there's usually like one or two activities for them to, to do by themselves, or if they can't, you can help them. For this task, um, they need to match the speech bubbles. If this is their first class, they would not know what to do, and then you might need to help them. So for example, Hey Bob, if I say hello, what can you say? And then you can say hello or hi. What if, if I ask you, how are you? What should you say? Then he would know or you can help him match it. And then he would just say the answers to you. That's also good. I'm fine. How about if I ask you, what are you doing? I'm watching TV. Right, and then just praise your student. Good job. Don't dwell too much on the fact that he did not do the activity alone. It's okay as long as he practiced his speaking. So after the activity, now comes the practice part. So this is just asking the student to answer you without knowing or without reading the answer. So it's just like, how are you? Uh, and then he would say, I am fine. What are you doing? I'm watching TV. If you have more time, what you can do is you can reverse roles again. So you can ask him, hey, Bob, now you be the teacher. Now I will be the student. Okay. Then Bob will ask you, how are you? You should say, I'm fine. What are you doing? I'm watching TV or I am watching TV. Okay. I suggest you to stick to the words that they have learned today, the fine uh, watching TV, because that's the focused vocabulary in this text. If your student's English level is more on the advanced um, level, then you could ask them to give you a different answer. After the practice part comes the phonics lesson. So in this lesson, you're just gonna teach them the WH sound. So what I like to do is I like to read the words twice and ask the student, read them twice as well, not with me. I would say, Bob, listen to me, listen to me. Or you can do this, listen to me. So what, what, why, why, when, when where where then after i read it twice i ask the student to read it twice for me as well so i would say bob now it's your turn can you read the words for me then bob will read the words twice because you read it twice now comes the review part and praising the students part okay so what i like to do in this in this page is i ask the student to read it for me so that i would know that they understand what they have learned in this class so I would ask Bob, Bob, can you please read the words that you have learned today? If Bob read the four words or the four focus words, I would draw a star over that. And then I will proceed to the sentence and do it again. I would ask Bob to read the sentences for me by saying, Hey Bob, how about the sentences that we have learned today? Can you read that for me? If Bob read it perfectly, another star. Then I would draw another star if Bob read the words perfect. So for the praise part, I like to use the sandwich method. That's positive, negative, positive. So in ending the lesson, I would usually do it like this. I would say, Bob, that's all the time that we have for today. See you tomorrow. Goodbye. That phrase, see you tomorrow, will give them the idea that they have already booked my class. 95% of the time, they will book my class again right after we finish class. Because I use the word, see you again tomorrow. Then they will check, hey, do I have class with this teacher? After that, then comes the 
closing song, which I don't do because I feel everything is finished in the last page because you already praised the student a lot and reviewed. So I would just end the class right there. But if you have time, please um, use the closing song. So I guess that concludes our classic English junior five one top class. If you have any questions, comment down below. And if you want to see more five one top related videos, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button. One more thing, I launched my teaching channel. So over there, you can find all the teaching materials that I have been using while I am here in China. Subscribing to my channel means that you get to see 5-1 Talk related videos, my life in China, some vlogs, some travel vlogs. But subscribing to my teaching channel means that you get access to some PDF materials, books, teaching videos, and songs. Thank you so much for watching my video. See you again next time. Bye!